Let me show you five things I consider are essential to know when working in Unity. The things I mentioned in this video I have learned throughout the years and implemented into my own process of building games and will definitely improve yours. Starting with number one, Cinemachine. Did you know you no longer need to create a camera follow system from scratch? Unity has an asset called Cinemachine that does everything you need. It works on 2D and 3D and it's highly customizable and head smooth. To download it, you just need to go to Windows Package Manager, set the filter to Unity Registry and type in Cinemachine. The system is quite straightforward and there is plenty of documentation and tutorials online. Of course, there can still be cases where custom camera systems might still be necessary for specific game designs, but that depends on your project and Cinemachine definitely covers most of them. If you're building a mobile game, this is a must. By writing this line of code at the start of your game, it will ensure your game runs at 60 FPS which makes it look a lot more smooth. It's worth noting that the optimal frame rate can vary depending on the game and device specification of course, but I believe 60 FPS is the most common one and you can definitely play around and see what works best for your project. This third tip is actually composed by two tips. The first one being to use TextMesh Pro over the built-in text system. So TextMesh Pro is a lot more customizable and higher quality and it's just better overall. Now the second part of this tip is when you're using TextMesh Pro and you want to use your own fonts in your game, you realize you can just drag and drop the font you downloaded in the font variable of the component. You need to turn your font into the font asset format and to do so you just need to go to Windows then go to Format Asset Creator and then add your fonts and this will automatically turn your fonts into a font asset format. This will allow you to use your own fonts using the TextMesh Pro system. Now tip number four is to use Unity Animation System for UI. The built-in animation timeline is extremely powerful and allows you to animate pretty much anything. Something I use it a lot for is to animate UI elements. You can animate by simply pressing the record button in the animation timeline and then literally changing the values of the elements you want to animate. And you can animate the size, the position, color, opacity, and so many more. It is very straightforward and this will definitely make your games more dynamic and interesting. Number five is actually very useful for when you're testing and it helps you a lot if you want to make your games responsive on many devices. It gives you a preview of how your game will look on tablets, Android devices and also iOS. To use it, you just need to go to the game window and change where it says game to simulator. Please note I advise you to test it on a real device as well as it will not represent the device performance or user experience. Now for those who are new, I am currently working on a personal project about the origins of Oswald and Mickey public domain versions, which you can check it out on my previous videos or on the description. Now this next one is a real time saver. You know when you click play and sometimes as your game becomes bigger, loading times also become longer when you press the play button. Do you know you can actually make it instant? You just need to go to edit, then go to project settings, editor, and then scroll down to where it says enter play mode options and check the box. Then you can press play and you no longer need to wait. There are times you'll need to disable it since it doesn't reload the domain nor the scene. Most of the time it works perfectly and it is just time saver for real. My last tip is you can actually see the private variables in the inspector which can really come in handy when you're testing and it helps you make sure everything is working correctly behind the scenes. To do so you just need to press on the three dots on the top right corner and change normal to debug and that's it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did consider liking it and subscribe if you haven't already and also for more tips and tricks, tutorials and developer stuff. You can also join our Discord community where you can share your own projects, discuss topics, send feedback and a lot more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on my next or previous video.